Welcome everyone. This is customizing and scaling your AWS control tower environment, COP401. My name is Nivas. I am part of the control tower team, having been with the development and launch of control tower since its GA in 2019. Let's get started. So when I'm usually speaking with my customers as we get started on AWS Control Tower, we will talk about the benefits and features of Control Tower. After this, the customer will launch AWS Control Tower with a few clicks of a button. This is a very simple operation. A couple of email addresses and filling out a few fields and Control Tower is launched into your organization. But are we done yet? Are the goals of your organization met after launching Control Tower? The answer is clearly not yet. We still need to meet the goals and objectives of your customers. This could be your machine learning and data science teams that might want to launch a SageMaker Studio or EMR Studio within your member accounts, or maybe it's your application development team that needs more secure accounts. So in this session, we will show you how you can customize your AWS Control Tower environment and take it further. This is a 400 level session, so expect to deep dive into the a few architectures and code. Here's our agenda for today. We're first going to do a quick refresher of what AWS Control Tower is. I realize that this might be well understood by many of you, but it will get everyone on the same page. Next, we'll talk about the common customizations of Control Tower and how it helps. Remic will also cover the CFCT customizations for AWS Control Tower solution and how you can deploy it into an AWS Control Tower environment. We'll also cover the best practices and considerations around the solution. Next, we'll talk about why it's important to have multiple organizations and how you can manage and deploy to these multiple organizations using the CFCT solution. Finally, we'll round it off with a demo of an account vending example. So let's get started. Before we begin, we're going to talk about what AWS Control Tower is and how it helps our customers. So Control Tower, as you know, automates the setup of new AWS multi-account environments. It has a few major benefits. It deploys best practice blueprints and guardrails in the form of AWS config rules and service control policies. The config rules could be anything from confirming that you have EBS encryption enabled for all of your EBS volumes to ensuring that the security groups for your EC2 instances do not have port 80 exposed to the public. As a service, Control Tower also offers many features, including account factory. This allows customers to deploy accounts with a few clicks of a button. Lastly, Control Tower provides a dashboard where your IT central administrators can monitor the, and view the compliance state of your accounts across your entire organization. So what does AWS Control Tower provide you? It gives you an, an orchestration of multiple AWS services on AWS. This includes organizations, SSO, service catalog, config, and CloudTrail. With this, you will receive two new accounts, a log archive and a security account. Both of these accounts will be underneath the security organizational unit. You will also have the option to create a sandbox organizational unit or any OU that you may choose to um, use. 
So with the log archive account, you will be able to manage and track activity across all of your accounts. CloudTrail, which will be instantiated in each member account, will be sent over to the central log archive account. With the security account, config aggregator will be instantiated there. So this will allow you to have an overview of the config rules and the conformance packs, giving you an understanding of the compliance state of your accounts. So now with your baseline environment set up with AWS Control Tower, the question becomes, what's next? How else can you customize your environment to meet the needs of your organization? So to talk more about this, Remek will join us. Thank you, Nivas. Uh, my name is uh, Remek Hetman. I am Principal Cloud Architect with AWS Identity Solution Team. And today I'm going to walk you through the customization for the control tower. So after you create your organization, and on top of this, you create the control tower, the next step is to think about uh, what kind of customization you're going to deploy in the new accounts. And by customization, we mean uh, all kinds of resources that need to be deployed, either in your security account, networking account, uh, shared services or workloads accounts. Uh, so let's uh, look at the top five customization you should consider as the next step after uh, creating the control tower. So the first one is identity. And under, under identity group, we should think about um, identity, the federation AWS with identity providers. So there is going to be Pink, Okta, AWS, um, uh, ADF, ADFS, or something else. Um, also, you should think about uh, creating the roles. What kind of IAM roles you're going to have to create on the AWS side so when the user federate, they can assume those roles. And uh, the common uh, roles will be uh, admin role, uh, DevOps role, uh, read-only role, but perhaps you should also consider uh, specific roles, like the role for uh, someone who is managing security in security account, or the networking account, networking administrator. And uh, perhaps there'll be more than two admin roles. The one is gonna be for you as the person who is managing entire organization, infrastructure, and environment. And also the admin for the BU or the dev team. And of course, if you're going to create two admins, you need to have some separation uh, in the policies, right? You have to make sure that the other admin is not going to uh, interact or des destroy something in your infrastructure. Uh, and also under the same category, you should think about the service control policy. So the service control policy, you're going to uh, deploy on top of the organization, and that's going to guard your all accounts. And what should go into SCP usually is going to be actually the element that can prevent anyone to destroy um, your infrastructure or deploy something that shouldn't. Let's say uh, if the police organization is saying that nobody should get access to the internet directly from the account, then you should prevent uh, create the uh, internet gateway in the accounts. Um, also, you should think about adding the data parameters. So the data parameters in the service control policy would control who has access to your resources and, um, and who and the users from your organization in the, if they can access some resources outside your organization. So that would be something that uh, going under the data parameters. Um, the next category is the security and compliance. And under security and compliance, uh, you should consider installing uh, security tools like uh, Guard Duty, like the uh, Security Hub, uh, Access Analyzer. Um, also, you should consider uh, deploying, creating the um, audit manager in the audit account. Um, and under the same category, uh, you should consider encryption. So under encryption, you should think 
If you're gonna use the default AWS KMS key for the services, or perhaps you're gonna create your own with the specific policies that are gonna be locked down only uh, and, and available or accessible only inside your organization. So that'll be another thing, thing to consider. And of course, that's gonna be depend on the uh, policies in your organization. Uh, the next category is uh, networking. So of course, you are probably gonna have some kind of connection from AWS to your on-premise, to your office, either uh, via uh, Direct Connect or VPN or something else. Um, and here you should think about things like, um, I'm gonna use a transit gateway, or perhaps it's gonna be peering between all VPCs. Um, also, when you're creating the new VPC in each account, you need to think how you're gonna run, how you're gonna provide the CIDR for the v uh, VPC, how you're gonna allocate the IP addresses across all accounts, across all the organization. And the same with the routing. Are you gonna provide uh, routing on the, to the shared services, network services, and back to on-premise? Or perhaps you're gonna do between uh, regular, between work account as well. And uh, lastly, you should think about the security group. So there should be some kind of default security, security group allow connection on the some common ports like maybe AD or 443, or maybe even uh, RDS, um, RDP or SSH. Um, the next category is logging. Uh, so Control Tower is gonna create a cloud trail but the cloud trail is gonna is not gonna log the data events. So perhaps you should consider um, creating additional cloud trail um, that's gonna be on the top of the organization and is gonna log only the data events for like uh, resources like S3 or uh, Lambda. Also, you should consider creating a VPC flow log for each new VPC. So that should be that should be uh, in the same template when you're creating a VPC. You should also create VPC flow log. And if your network account you have firewall, you should also think about the login, uh, all the logs for the firewall. Uh, lastly, uh, resources like Lambda function is gonna create a log in the CloudWatch logs, and that log is gonna be created in the account and the region when the Lambda was deployed. So perhaps you would consider uh, pulling all the logs to the centralized location. Either it's gonna be S3 bucket or Splunk or something else. Uh, and the last category is control. So under control, we're gonna talk about, uh, we're gonna have all the AWS uh, config rules that's gonna govern your, um, govern your environment your uh, organization. Um, also the control, you should think about the resource policies. So if you create, if someone's gonna create S3, uh, SNS or KMS, and the resources that support uh, resource policy, you should think how, how we're gonna manage this. Is it gonna be somehow automatically added? If you're gonna uh, leave this for developers to create the policies, or you're gonna take the control over this. And perhaps you're gonna have some Lambda function or even config rule that each time when the resource created, you can automatically attach policies that's gonna prevent access to those resources outside your organization. Um, and so I said, you could use the Lambda uh, or AWS config rule for this, but one of the solution would be actually use the AWS service catalog. And so how this works is you would create the template for the resource and inside the template you would create also the policies. So you have CloudFormation template, let's say with S3 bucket and also you're going to have the policies um, that is specific for your organization and you're going to create product in the service catalog from this template. Now you're going to prevent your developers to create S3 bucket directly using the API, but you're gonna allow them to create this bucket through the provisioning uh, product from the service catalog. And by this, you're gonna enforce actually creating the, not only the resource, but also automatically apply policies.
So that would be something uh, to consider. Um, so after you create some kind of cloud formation templates for all those uh, customizations, and the next step is how you're gonna deploy this, how you're gonna manage this and the scale, and especially how you're gonna automatically apply all those templates for the new account. And for this, we can use customization uh, for the control tower. So customization for the control tower was uh, created by AWS uh, Builders Solutions. Uh, it's publicly available for everyone. Uh, the customization is, has to be deployed in your uh, managed account, in the account when uh, AWS Control Tower was deployed. Um, and the reason for that is because the customization is using the uh, control tower execution role across to deploy stacks across all, uh, all accounts. So customization can be used to deploy uh, your templates, the cloud formation templates, but also can be used to deploy uh, service control policies, the CPs. And how this works, uh, you have to create manifest file and we're gonna uh, divide to manifest file and next section. And, but in short, in this manifest file, you're gonna specify the templates um, that you want to deploy in the different accounts. Uh, you can specify the CP policies uh, and you can specify, specify location. And when you have the manifest file with all the resources, you can deploy this either to S3 or to code commit. So when you're creating the solution, when you're deploying the solution in the managed account, you can choose if the source of the data, of the resources, is going to be in the S3 bucket or in the code commit. So if you, did, if you choose S3 bucket, I mean, you're going to have to zip everything, uh, manifest file with all templates and upload to the S3 bucket. And if you choose code commit, commit, you can just uh, commit um, all manifest files and resources to the code commit. And either way, if you're going to be S3 or code commit, when you make the changes and you upload the changes, that's going to uh, trigger the code pipeline. A code pipeline is going to first going to run code build. And code build is going to go through the, all the cloud formation templates and the policies, and it's going to validate uh, if there is uh, any errors. And also, it's going to check, also, it's going to run all your templates through CFNAC. So if anything is going to fail, if CFNAT is going to report error, or if there will be some issues with the cloud formation template, the deployment is going to stop, and you're going to get notification that there was uh, some uh, issue. Um, but if everything is fine, the next step is going to be uh, called the step function. That's going to deploy first the SCPs, uh, and then it's going to be another uh, call, call uh, to the step function that's going to deploy the cloud formation, cloud formation template through the AWS cloud formation stack set. Um, and that will be the one path when the pipeline is triggered. Another one is when the control tower is creating the new account. So after control tower creates new account, uh, control tower is going to issue the lifecycle event to the event uh, bridge. And that in that moment, the event bridge is going to collect all the information from the control tower about new account and upload to the SQS. Uh, to the SQS. And SQS is going to trigger Lambda, and Lambda is going to trigger the same process, the same pi pi pipeline like before. Um, and so that's, that's how the customization for the control tower works. Um, so again, you can use this uh, to deploy uh, cloud formation template, and you can deploy uh, the service uh, control policies. Now, uh, let's take a look a bit on to, let's take a look at manifest file. This is a manifest file that is used by our team to uh, deploy resources across our two organizations, the development and, pro and production. And so on the very beginning, uh, what we're doing is uh, deploying uh, the IDP um, and we're using Okta. Uh, there's a couple of variations. So it's the same template, but it's just providing based on the uh, parameter, we are deploying different role that's depend on the where, uh, which, in which OU we're deploying um, template. 
Uh, and the next one, we have the global roles. Uh, so we're uh, deploying a couple uh, global, global roles, uh, some other buckets, um, and then we have the centralized SMS topic. And so you wonder why uh, you would need the centralized SMS topic. Well, in most cases, what uh, everyone is doing, uh, when you have Lambda function, and the Lambda function is uh, using uh, SNS to send some notifications, um, it's going to create the SNS topic along uh, with the Lambda function. So we're going to create this, this topic, uh, we're going to provide the uh, creation of the SNS topic in the same template, the same Cloud Foundation template when you're creating Lambda function. Now, if the topic is going to send notification the email, that means someone needs to subscribe uh, the certification. And that means each time when the new account is created, is vended, uh, you're going to have to, or someone going to have to either subscribe or you're going to come up, you have to come up with some kind of automation. So instead of doing this, uh, we have just single template. We move all the topics from the Lambda templates and put to a separate topic separate uh, cloud function template and deploying this in the centralized location. And so we just have to subscribe this once and it's ready. And all, uh, all Lambda function that publishing to this, to this uh, topics, uh, they're just uh, doing this the cross account. And um, the only thing you need to remember is that you're going to have to attach resource policies to all those topics allow cross account uh, publishing. Uh, and the best way to do this would be attach policies that allow uh, for your entire organization publishing those topics. Uh, and you can achieve, achieve this by adding a condition to your policy. The condition will be the principle or ID. Um, as if you remember, I mentioned that if you have multiple organizations and you're deploying something in the single single account, then um, you have to make somehow distinctions what is the development with production organization. And so in our case, right, we have the, the keyword is, is in this place, in this case is called share services. And when the pipeline is running, the pipeline is gonna go to the manifest file and gonna look for those uh, keywords. It's gonna um, replace them with the correct account ID. So we're gonna deploy in the uh, production organization is going to replace with the uh, shared service account ID from the production. Any development will be replaced with development account. Uh, we also have the uh, creating the KMS key, uh, audit manager, um, some notifications, uh, resource detection. Um, so that's specific Lambda function used by the uh, AWS config. <clears throat> we're deploying some uh, Lambda layers. So we have request, uh, we have also the bottle tree, and um, uh, we're creating the network dispatcher in the network uh, network uh, account. Network dispatcher can be, uh, is responsible for uh, vending the IP addresses, uh, deleting the default um, VPC, uh, and a couple other things. Uh, deploying resource selector Lambda function. Uh, now this is uh, the Lambda function that's actually, um, it's triggered when the new CloudWatch log is created and it's gonna make configurations so of the, so the new CloudWatch is pushed to the centralized location. Uh, when deploying other network uh, resources, uh, that's network account. So uh, this template is deploying like uh, transit gateway, all the VPCs. Um, it's gonna deploy NAT servers, firewall, things like this. Um, some uh, routing to the corporate network, and then we're creating uh, VPCs, uh, and we have couple of variation. So we have one the shared services, and then we have for the workloads account, one is connected, one is standalone. Um, and then we have some config rules. 
And here's actually in the config rules is example of outputting the parameter from one template. So you can see this here, right? We have the output and the parameter name, that parameter name in the cloud formation template is this. And it's gonna store the value under this key in the parameter store. And this template is actually gonna pull this value from the parameter store and pass under this parameter to this cloud formation template. Uh, some governance uh, Lambda function, uh, some patching configuration, uh, some CIS metrics, uh, endpoints. So we're creating uh, a lot of endpoints in our VPC, um, some specific private zones uh, for uh, certain endpoints. Uh, and the last one is the update of the deployment status. And we're gonna talk a little bit more about this in the next session when we're gonna talk about end-to-end -end, uh, vending account solution. But what it's doing is just gonna call the Lambda function, it's gonna, is always as the last step, and it's gonna call Lambda function and I'm gonna say, um, well, I finished my deployment and account is ready. Because that was last step, which means if we reach this step, is everything uh, above was deployed. Um, and also we have the uh, section for the SCP policies. So we have different for different OUs. And so the difference in configuration is under SCP, you're not uh, specifying regions, uh, parameters or outputs. Um, you're not specifying the resource file deployment targets, which could be again, version unit or uh, accounts. Deployment method is SCP. And one additional uh, attribute is description. So when the new SCP is gonna be created an organization, uh, uh, this, uh, this description gonna be added. Uh, so that's all about the manifest file. Now let's go back to our presentation and let's uh, review the end-to-end -end vending account uh, solution. Let's talk about the best practices and consideration for the customization for the control tower. So number one, any resource supported by the cloud formation should be deployed by the customization for the control tower. So why is that? It's simple. Uh, you don't wanna manage multiple pipeline to deploy your infrastructure, your environment. Right? So you can have separate pipeline uh, for the developers who deploy uh, some application, but managing entire infrastructure on the AWS, that should be single pipeline. And if you decide to use the customization for the control tower, that's what you should do, that's what you should use. So each resource that you can deploy using the cl uh, cloud formation, you should use, uh, you should only use um, the customization for the control tower pipeline. Um, the next one is um, parallel versus sequential deployment. So if you look at the manifest, you, you're gonna see there is, you can provide multiple products, right? Multiple resources that you wanna deploy. Um, and those resources are always gonna be deployed uh, sequential. So one by one, so gonna be first in the manifest file, when this is done, it's gonna point another one and another one. And so by this, you can have uh, some kind of um, option to reference one to another, right? So you can, so you know, if there is uh, some dependencies in the second resource, uh, some dependencies from the first one deployment, you know it's gonna be okay because uh, the second is not gonna start deploying until the first one is completed. But if you're deploying in multiple regions, that's changing a lot. When you're creating uh, the customization, when you're deploying this customization in the control tower, in the uh, manage account, one of the parameters is going to be um, regional, uh, regional concurrences. And under this, you can select either parallel or sequential. And all that means, if you're going to deploy more than one region and you're going to ch uh, choose parallel, that means all the regions for the single product, a single resource, it's gonna deploy at the same time. Uh, if you're gonna choose sequential, it's gonna be one by one, one region, first region, second, and so on. Um, so if there is no specific reason for you to use sequential, always use parallel. 
because that's going to speed up the process, right? If you have 10 regions, if you're going to choose sequential now, right? It's going to be one, two, three, and so on. We're going to parallel. That means you're going to speed up your deployment process 10 times. Um, the next one is full tolerance performance versus consistencies. So again, when you're deploying uh, the customization, there will be option to choose um, uh, the, the, it's called the default tolerance per, uh, percentage. And the default value is 10. And so, so what that mean? Let's, let's say you have a single product that you're deploying in 10 accounts and four regions. So you're gonna go to the, control, to the uh, stack set for that product, you're gonna see there is gonna be like 40 instances, right? 10 accounts, four region, 40 instances. Um, so for the single product, you're gonna be like kind of like almost 40 deployments. And the 10% mean that you allow 10 of those deployments, which is four, four uh, deployments can fail and the, the pipeline is gonna cause success. So this is very important. If you're okay that some deployments can fail, then you can you can use the you, you can use the the ten percent because that means you're gonna have better performance. Because even if there's single failure in the deployment, the pipeline gonna continue, there'll be no issues. But in most enterprise, you wanna keep consistencies, right? So that means um, if even single one failed. You wanna stop deployment. You're gonna you're gonna be notified that was something something failed. Right? One of the deployment failed, and you need uh, make adjustment changes and redeploy everything. So in this case, uh, you should always use the zero as the value when you're creating the pipeline, uh, when you when you're creating when you're deploying the the uh, customization. And this can be always changed late, later, but if you wanna keep consistency across all the account. Just put the zero when you're deploying this. Um, the next one is proactively manage service quotas. As you're gonna add and deploy more and more resources in the new accounts, you might run into some limits. And so the question is how we can how we can adjust the limit before even an account is created, right? Because the customization is gonna start as soon as the new account was created. So how we can do this? And the answer is use the AWS service quota. So how are you doing this? You're gonna to go to the manage accounts, to the AWS service quota, and you're gonna create the template, organization template, and you're gonna list all the uh, limits that you want to increase. So when the new account was vended by the control tower and was registered in the organization, um, the service quota is gonna actually trigger this template and gonna request increase the values because the limits uh, for for the limits that was listed in the template. Now here's uh, something I uh, need to need to think about or, or consider. Um, some limits can take time, can take even hours, even days to be increased for certain for certain services. So that means they're not gonna be ready when your account is deploying. So always test uh, before if you're gonna do if you're gonna need to make uh, increase uh, limits the default limits for the new account just test if it's gonna work for you. Um, and the next one is global resources. So resources like uh, IAM roles or S3 bucket are global. And what we mean is if you create IAM role in the region US one and say you you just log in you switch to US one and you create role. And then you're gonna to try to switch to US2 region and create the same role with the same name, it's gonna fail because it's a global, right? So it's not dependent on the regions. The same with the S3 bucket. So the despite you can actually select um, when you're creating back bucket, you can select kind of region, but you cannot make the same name across uh, different regions. Um, so uh, how to manage this? There is a two options. Um, so when you have template that deploying, say deploying some kind of Lambda function, and at the same time is gonna create a role for the Lambda function. Uh, one of the options would be adding the region, automatically adding a, a region to the name of the role. And so that's fine if you're gonna deploy in only in a couple regions, 
but if you're going to deploy like 10 regions uh, and you're going to have a lateral, you may run in some issue with uh, limits. So another solution would be actually take creation of the roles and move to the separate template. And when you move to the separate template, this template can be run um, in the manifest file, can be specified before any other uh, resources that are going to use those, those roles. So let's say if you have five templates deploying different uh, Lambda roles, you can take the portion that's creating uh, roles to different template and run the template before uh, you're going to run and deploying the Lambda functions. So that will be a solution to handle this. And the last one is using uh, multiple organizations. But before we're going to deep dive to multiple organizations, uh, Niva is going to talk about um, the security reference architecture and also about the new uh, cloud formation uh, control tower feature uh, related to the uh, Terraform. Thank you, Ramek. So Ramek talked about customizations, considerations, and some of the best practices around the CFCT framework. You may be wondering, though, how can you get started with this? Is there anything that can plug and play into my customizations framework? And the answer is yes. We do have the security reference architecture, which is a comprehensive set of examples and guidances on how you can fast track the deployment of security services. This includes Guard Duty, Security Hub, Macy, and more. And so, in order to take advantage of the SRA or the security reference architecture, you'll have to confirm that your AWS control tower environment matches the multi-account architecture that it expects. So with the SRA architecture, it will require an OU for the infrastructure, and this is where you can keep your shared services and networking accounts. You will already have a security OU that comes with AWS Control Tower, and AWS Control Tower will have set up a log archive and a security account which contains the config aggregator. And then finally, the SRA architecture expects a workloads OU. When you have a multi-account architecture that meets the guidelines of the SRA framework, you can then take advantage of many of our manifest files, which can be found on our GitHub location. And that's the URL below. So, so do check it out. You can find many of the manifest files, edit them, so that it's tailored according to your needs, and then you can deploy them across your control tower environment. And we will continue to add more and more products and manifest files to this repository. Next, I'm going to introduce Account Factory for Terraform, otherwise known as AFT. We recently launched this, and this is a Terraform-based pipeline that integrates well into Account Factory for AWS Control Tower. So with this, it already supports a number of different features. You can enroll your AWS Control Tower accounts into AWS Enterprise Support. It also supports Guard Duty and CloudTrail data events. The data events include monitoring S3 and Lambda functions. At the moment, you can also delete VPCs automatically using Aft. And we expect to add more and more features to this pipeline. So if your organization is a heavy Terraform shop and is already using Terraform pipelines, you'll find this much easier to integrate with. Um, and you'll also be able to bring in your customized TF workloads into this pipeline. And with that, I'm going to hand it off to Remek, who's going to talk to us about why it's important to have multiple organizations and how you can deploy and manage these organizations with the customizations framework for Control Tower. OK, thank, thank you, Nivas. So now uh, let's talk about uh, managing multiple organizations with uh, customization for the Control Tower. 
So number one, the question would be actually, why would you even consider having uh, multiple organizations? And so you can see, we named them development versus production. But we're saying development is not from the developer standpoint, it's not the SDLC uh, organization. Because the SDLC, you're gonna manage in your production by creating different OUs or at least that's what, what is recommended, right? So you're gonna create uh, the dev OU, a non-production OU, and production OU. When we're talking about multi-organization management, and when we're referring to the development uh, organization, is more from the testing standpoint, the testing of the changes to your environment. So if you have control tower and you're running the customization, so customization have manifest file, single manifest file when you're managing your entire infrastructure, your entire organization. And so single mistake, either with SCP or some template, well, can be catastrophic. That's why you should always have two organizations. The one, the development, when you can test all the changes and, uh, and when, the, when you test, uh, when the tests are results are correct or positive, then you can actually uh, apply the same changes to the production um, organization. Uh, then the one other things, um, if we talk about the multiple organization, would be challenges. And one of the challenge would be the environment properties. So if you're going to have two organizations, then probably you're going to have um, the different value for certain tags. Let's say you have a uh, tag organization or tag environment or something like this. Uh, probably you should make some uh, distinctions. And also the automation. How are you going to automate? Do you going to keep everything uh, separately? Like totally two different um, source? Everything will be two uh, different cloud formation templates, one for dev, one for production, or there'll be something else. Um, so to address those two challenges, so the first one uh, can be easily handled by the uh, parameter system. So remember, I mentioned in the customization allow you to pull the value from the parameter store. So that means if you have two organization, both of the manager account, so the, the customization running the manager account. So in the uh, the development organization, the parameter store, you're gonna put the tag uh, specific to the development organization and the production to production. And the manifest file, you're gonna use uh, just reference to the same parameter name because it's gonna be the same name in both organizations. And in automation, uh, it should be the same like uh, if you just have an uh, other application, managing another application in your organization. So most common scenario would be you have single uh, GitHub repository with two branches. One is development, one is production. And when you're making changes to the development branches, that's gonna trigger um, the, some pipeline it's going to zip all the information from the development uh, branch and upload to S3, and that's going to trigger development uh, customization. And when you test it, it is done. Uh, you can just uh, merge your development with production, and the process is going to uh, deploy all the changes to the production. Uh, and so that's what we call the single manifest pattern. There is a one, one thing that you, you need to consider. If the deployment, if you're gonna make deployment to the single account, then in the organization, in the, if you have two organization, the accounts is gonna have different ID. So if, you, if you're deploying on the OU level, there is no problem because in both organizations, you're gonna have the same name on the OU. But if you're gonna deploy to the single account, and that may, may be a good chance, right? You have some organization, uh, so you have some OU, in OU, there will be more than one account, but you need to deploy only to the single account, then you're gonna specify account ID in your manifest file. So to address this in the single manifest pattern, um, you would have to um, have something um, on your pipeline. So the pipeline, is, before it's gonna deploy, you're gonna zip everything and upload to the S3 bucket, should uh, go to the manifest file, and under accounts, look for the specific keyword. So instead, uh, entering like um, account ID, you could put some uh, keyword like network 
or share services, something like that. That's going to represent uh, or reflect the account ID. And then when the process is uh, going to manifest file, you're going to find a uh, keyword. It's going to just replace with the correct uh, account ID. And the account is going to be there coming from the organization or uh, from the production or development organization. And I can share with you that uh, the builders team is working on the update to the customization. That's going to allow you actually pull the account ID from the parameter store. The same like you can do this right now with the, um, with the cloud formation. Uh, so uh, let's now, let's take a look about, let's look at, look at the manifest file uh, that our team is using to manage uh, multiple organizations. Now, our last topic is end-to-end -end account vending uh, solution. So I'm going to show you the example what we build in our organization to manage uh, account vending for our uh, customers. So number one is um, there is ticketing system. So it's, we have uh, probably in your organization, you have some ticketing system like uh, maybe Jira, maybe Snow, when you use, user can request new account. Uh, and so after that, the next step is the ticket should be uh, should call a Lambda function. And the Lambda function is going to register all the information in the DynamoDB table. Uh, and the next step, it's, it's kind of optional, so depend on your organization. But in our case, we have the request validation. So the request validation uh, is going to check if the user who requests uh, has permission actually to, to, to make this request is valid. If all the parameters are correct, uh, things like that. And if everything is correct, then it's going to update DynamoDB, set the flag, OK, this request is uh, good to process, and it's going to uh, notify Lambda function. So Lambda function can, can start uh, requesting the new account. Uh, so after that, Lambda actually going to uh, request the new, the new account, um, and it's going to request from the, from the service catalog. And when you create the control tower, and after that, we're going to go to the service catalog, you're going to notice there is a product called uh, AWS Control Tower um, Account Factory. And this product is actually used to create the new account by the control tower. So each time, if you're going to go to control tower, you're going to say, um, requesting new account, but new account, is that's what's gonna what's gonna happen? The control tower is gonna go to a service catalog and provision this product. And the same you can do in your Lambda function. So you can actually provision this this product, and that's gonna create and register new account in the control tower. And you're gonna notice the parameters that you need to enter to the to the product on the um, service catalog console is exactly the same if you just use the control tower. Um, and, and said, okay, I want to have a new account. It's going to be like uh, the account uh, email, alias, and a couple of information about, um, about the system. Um, and of course, after that, the Lambda function should monitor uh, if uh, the account uh, was vended. Uh, and probably the, the best uh, solution for this is use the step function and rotate and calling again the Lambda function, Lambda checking, if not vended back to the step function and until the uh, account was uh, vended or failed. And as I assume our account was vended, everything is okay. Um, so I mean, uh, the next step, actually the next step should be if uh, account was vended, you should make, you should grab the uh, ID, the Lambda function should take the ID of the new account, upload to DynamoDB, and also register new account in some kind of inventory system. So perhaps in the snow or maybe other uh, inventory system. Um, so, so that would be one thing when the new account was vended, but also there is uh, two other uh, events that are gonna happen at the same time. So the one gonna be called the LC Lambda function. And the Lambda function, the LC Lambda function uh, so this is stand for the uh, live cycle, cycle event. Uh, and what it's going to do is going to create or deploy everything that cannot be managed to the customization. 
Um, so, I mean, everything that is not supported by the cloud formation. For instance, um, creating alias for the new account, um, creating a security group in the Active Directory. So if you have federation and using author ping, you know you're going to have to create a security group in the Active Directory with specific format. So that's what should happen in this moment. Uh, the same, if you have network account and the network account, you're going to run some kind of uh, network dispatcher that's going to manage your IP addresses. So if the new account, if the new, when the new account is created, before you're going to deploy VPC, and the template is going to call the networking account to request new IP address, to request to vend new IP address, uh, the new account needs to have permission to call the Lambda across region, across accounts. And that's what you can address by uh, in the LC. Also things like uh, uh, set up the Amazon S3 bucket policies, uh, the public access on the entire account level. So you can always you can you can specify you're creating S3 bucket you can specify the the uh, public access uh, in the template, but also what you can do you can specify this on the account level, and that you could do using the LC. And perhaps there is uh, other uh, things that you should address uh, by LC that that's something that you cannot do this to the cloud formation. Um, the next, the same time actually, when LC gonna be uh, executed, the same time uh, Control Tower gonna uh, start the customization. So the customization is gonna run um, and uh, deploy all the resources in the new new account. Uh, and so, as I mentioned, in, when we were looking the live uh, live manifest, on the very end there should be something. Um, that's gonna call should be like as the last step as the last resource, and should call the lambda function and tell them lambda function that customization was done. And so actually in this case, that's when you're gonna use this. One is kind of handy because it's gonna tell your solution the customization was done and the account is ready. And when it's done is when that was uh, notified when this uh, lambda was notified the account was uh, vended, it's fully fully baseline with all resources. Uh, the next step is going to be calling the ticketing system to resolve the ticket and notify user that the account was vented. Um, so that's all what we have for you. Uh, thank you very much. See you next time.